Welcome back. I hope you've been keeping well. Thank you for joining me. And let's get right to our stories. Story number one. Opie writes, I grew up in an abusive home and saw my mother allow the men in her life walk all over her. I watched her try to teach those same values to me and my brother by not making him do any chores but putting all the responsibilities of chores and cooking on me. My brother was given choices and opportunities I was not and he was given freedom I wasn't. So I decided early on I would never be like her. Her. I met my fiancé when I was 20. I wasn't looking for a relationship, but he pursued me and I was broke. He is five years older than me and earns very good money. By the time he was 25, he already owned his own house, which in my materialistic heart was a deciding factor that led me to give in and start dating him. I have never been in love with him, but it's not like I don't like him. He is sweet, caring, we discuss everything and we are always laughing. He makes me dinner every night and massages my wrist when it plays up. We go on date nights once a week and holidays once a year. And we love our dogs so much. He looks so handsome when he plays with them. I could watch them for hours. I see our relationship as more of a partnership. I also have come a long way in the six years we have been dating. And I am not so broke. My conditions for marriage have always been never marry for love and never marry without a secure way out. I have both those conditions. I'm happy. I'm ready to have a family and maybe a few more dogs. I don't know if my fiancé knows if I love him or not and I will never tell him I don't. Well, OP, it kind of sounds to me like you have a very good relationship with your fiancé. All the things you mentioned there, that it's a partnership, which is what a marriage is, that you love watching him playing with the dogs, that he's so kind to you, and that you're happy. That sounds like a good relationship. Let's get some comments. I hate to break it to you, but you do love him. It's just not, quote, Hollywood, unquote, love. You respect him, you allow him intimacy with you, you trust him, and you even like to watch him looking happy and handsome while playing with the dogs. Real world love is much more quiet and content than constant drama and fireworks. Someone else says, The thing is that traumatic childhoods can make love feel wrong. Normal feels wrong. Kindness is scary. So I read this as her loving him, but not allowing it to touch her or accept it. And somebody else also says, This sounds like you do love him. It's just that mental block blocking you. But you love him. Your post rings of love for your man. You're doing way better than your mom. And we've got an edit followed by an update from Opie. Jeez, you guys. Fine, I'll go to therapy. You've convinced me I have no clue what I'm talking about. I've never been more confused about my feelings in my life. Still getting married though and no, I won't leave him. Update number two. Ugh, you guys, you have me so caught up in my feelings. I told him I loved him for the first time. And he cried, and then I cried, and we both cried, and I think the dogs cried. And yeah, he won't stop saying that he loves me. And I'm hungry. I just want burritos now. Well, Opie, there you go. The love is there. The love has probably been there for a very long time from both sides. It's time for you to enjoy your life with this man that you do love. I wish the two of you the very best, Opie. And let's move on to story number two. Opie writes, I met this woman and she's honestly the most beautiful and pure soul that I've ever met. I can't believe she is real sometimes. I really want to date her. I found out she sells pictures of her feet, just her feet and no other parts of her body or face. She also sells shoes and socks that she's worn and takes requests for certain ones to wear and send to the man or to have her toes painted a certain color. I am heartbroken and honestly disgusted. She is so perfect, 
So I don't know why she has to do something like that. Even if these men don't know her name or face or anything about her, it is still a part of her. She has a job in nuclear engineering and is not hard up for money. Just because men will pay her does not mean she should do it. It is disgusting. I was so heartbroken to learn this. Oh, OP, it's feet. A lot of people walk around in sandals or bare feet. It's feet. I really don't think it's a big deal. It's obviously a big deal to you, but it's not a big deal to her. It's not a big deal to most people. If somebody wanted to pay you for photographs of your feet, are you really going to tell me you would say no? It's just feet, OP. But anyway, let's get some comments. Then leave her alone. Trust me, she won't have any problem finding a decent guy who won't judge her. You won't be missed. And somebody else says, Bro, feet pics? She's on her grind, man, making rent money and having food in her belly. She's not a porn star or prostitute. She's smart as if in a market with thirsty sims. If your ass could make money off your caveman feet, you would, bro, just like I would. You're going to throw away a great catch over that? Get real. Let's get two more comments. I mean, a woman farted in a jar and it sold like crazy. She didn't need to. She just did. If you really like her and still want to be in contact, you should ask her why she does it. Could just be extra money on the side. And who can complain about that? And a final comment. What's the website? I want to sell my feet pics. Story number three. Opie writes, My, female 42, daughter, female 16, shattered my heart today. I live together with my daughter. Her dad isn't in the picture. Everything was just fine and normal until she suddenly came over to me and asked if I'm in the middle of something important. I knew that this was something more serious based on the way she acted. I told her that I'm not doing anything important and she sat down next to me. She just looked at me in the eyes for a while and I started to get this awful feeling. Then she pulled up her sleeves and just said, quote, help, unquote with her voice so little I could barely hear her. I couldn't believe it. I don't know how long I just sat there. It was so shocking and I was so disappointed in myself for not knowing that she was struggling. First thing I did was giving her a hug. We both cried. I asked her if she wants to tell me how she is feeling and how I can help her. We talked and she explained her situation and we agreed to try therapy and taking her out of school for a while. I told her that she can talk to me anytime she wants and decide herself what she wants to share. I promise to always support her and never judge no matter what it is. I'm glad she told me, but I just can't help but to think how I didn't see it. She seemed so normal and happy and I could have never guessed what's going on. Well, OP, I wouldn't beat myself up over this if I were you. The fact is she came to you and she asked for help. That's how comfortable your daughter feels with you. And the other thing is that teenagers have a way of hiding their feelings. And that's why parents don't always know what is going on with their children. Even though they're right there living under their roof and appear to be happy and well adjusted. This is the kind of post that reminds parents to check in on their children, especially their teenagers. To ask them how they're doing, if they want to talk about anything. And just to let them know that you're there for them. And I'm sure a lot of people that read this and even listening to this now will be stopping and asking themselves if they really know what's going on with their teenagers. Let's get some comments. The fact that she came to you in a vulnerable moment is a testament to how well you've done. She trusted you in that moment to help her and not judge her. Don't beat yourself up. Someone replies to this comment. This. I was too scared to tell my parents when I was going through this, and I'm lucky to still be here. Someone else says, Be sure to remind her how proud you are that she asked for help, that you believe her pain, whatever it is. It's real and big to her. And a final comment. She's lucky to have you. My mom screamed and yelled at me in front of a crowd of people. 
I wish I had someone like you. You're doing good, I promise you. Yes, indeed, OP. I think your daughter's going to be fine. She's come to you with this, and she knows you're not going to judge her. You're there to help her and support her. And you've got some work to do, OP. And I just know it's going to be okay. I really do. And this is, as I said, a reminder to everybody. Take care of your teenagers. Well, that's it for this edition of WOW Drama Stories. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing and leave a comment. Until next time, take good care of yourself.